All right, so this is going to be a quick video showing how to open up the Dell Alienware Area 51, R4, and R5 desktop computers, okay? So this lock here makes it so that these won't work, but basically you just lift these panels to unlock or to open these side panels. So it's very easy to open this up. You just pull this up, all right? You'll see the side panel pops out like that. All right, once it pops out, you just grab it and pull it straight up, or you can kind of wiggle it a little, and there we go. All right, so these side panels have these contact points here for the LED lights. I'm not gonna be taking anything out. The original RAM here is um, 2400 megahertz. Um, it had two 16 gig sticks. The customer was messing around with it, and they tried to put, um, uh, if I didn't mention it already, these are 2400 megahertz. They tried to put a 2666 two, to 2666 uh, megahertz RAM. And when they had both of those in, it just causes the computer to blue screen. Um, I don't know if you could probably put two, uh, two more 2400 megahertz RAM sticks, but <coughs> excuse me, but with the matching RAM. It was having issues, it would just blue screen and would give different errors. Um, the RAM is very standard like every other desktop. You just pull these tabs um, out to the sides away from the RAM. And then when you push the RAM in, it should automatically click these tabs in. But if you push it all the way in as far as you can and the tabs don't click in, you could just manually click them in by hand. Um, once you've done that and you turn on the computer, uh, make sure your computer is off of course before changing the RAM, but um, once you've done that, uh, it takes a while for the computer to boot up, so you have to be patient, turn on the computer, and just let it sit. It might take a while. Eventually, it will pop up a screen telling you that the amount of memory or CPU or something has changed. I think you press F1 to continue. It'll pop up another screen through like a Dell, like a Dell screen where it's like white and blue. Um, mostly white and it'll tell you that the memory has changed things like that and yeah um, then you just tell it to continue and it should be okay um, we're just gonna take a quick look inside I'm not actually gonna take anything apart but uh, here you can see the motherboard connections um, that's a fan connector right there that's um, normally integrated GPU power or CPU power sorry that's the CPU power um, another fan connector the fan's kind of gross, so I'm going to have to clean it later. Um, wireless card right there. Got the wireless antenna wires coming out here. That one's not connected to anything. The other one's going... Um, that gray wire's not connected to anything. But the black and white ones, I think they're going... It's hard to see. Yeah, they're going into the back. Um, so into the back panel. I'm not going to pop open the back because I don't want to risk messing anything up. You can see a bunch of ports here there's a usb so these ones i think all these there's the empty white one and then the other two i think those are for usb ports and then you got those two smaller ones which uh, i'm not sure what they are sensors so they actually label everything on here it's kind of nice there's another eight pin connector there so i'm not sure why it has i guess maybe two cpu connectors there's the m.2 ssd here that's a pcie nvme ssd all right, it says PCI Express. You got another fan connector there. You got all these SATA connectors there. So there's probably some hard drives either hidden behind or maybe it's for, are these hard drive slots? I don't know. These looks like, oh, these are just for holding, for holding up the video card. So for added um, weight support, stress support. Um, yeah, those are SATA cables there. I guess they go into the back. You got a USB 3, two USB 3 connectors. So those things are for USB 3 ports. Okay, um, I don't see much else. There's, you can actually see the fans there, there, and then this one for the CPU. Um, again, I'm not opening the back side panel. If you want, you can open up and take a look yourself. There's the um, CPU, or uh, not CPU, the BIOS, RTC, real-time clock, CMOS battery, whatever you want to call it. There's a jumper here for resetting the RTC. So it says RTC clear one. So that if you move that blue jumper over to the left um, to cover the last pin there. So if you cover the last pin on that and the middle pin, 
it will clear out the BIOS settings. So if you mess with the BIOS and mess something up, that's how you reset it. Then you just push, it, um, put it back to this position that it's in right now, and that will uh, let the computer boot back up. If you leave it over to the left, your um, computer actually won't boot. Okay. Um, if you have a password on the motherboard, they actually have. Let me see where to go. I think. Oh, there you go. So there's this password clear right above the SSD. So you can actually move that over to the left, and it should clear the BIOS password. Um, at least that's what I think in theory. I don't know what this uh, safe mode is for, but there's a jumper if you move it over to the right. I guess it'll run in safe mode. And then there's a jumper for service mode. I don't, oh yeah, there's three pin. There are three pins there. So there's a service mode pin and a safe mode pin. So that can be confusing if someone doesn't know what they're doing and they move those things around. Um, the computer might not start up right. Um, so keep that in mind if your computer's running in safe mode or service mode or something weird like that. Um, it might be these things. Oh, this is a uh, overclock safe mode. So if you ran some overclock settings and it's having issues, you can probably move that jumper over and it'll fix that. And then I'm not sure what service mode will do, but your computer probably won't boot up right. Um, but anyways, that's pretty much all there is that I'm going to show in here. There is uh, liquid cooling, all right? Um, if you take this out, make sure that you redo the thermal paste. You don't want to reuse thermal paste that's, that's there once you pull that thing out. So keep that in mind. Um, I am going to clean that dust out later. But for now, I think that's it. Let me see. There's some dust here. Maybe I should open the back. Well, I'll show how to put back. No, I won't, I won't open it up because I don't want to um, get in trouble if anything else goes wrong. Um... If you want, you can show me what's on the back. If you're not sure what you're looking at, you can make a YouTube video yourself. And I will try and point out and explain what it is. Feel free to send a link to your YouTube video. And hopefully I can see it and and give you some tips if you're not sure what you're looking at in there. Um, but most desktop setups are pretty similar, so not too much to look at. All right, so we got this panel. It's a little bit tricky to put back. But the main thing you want to know is you want to try and keep it more straight up. If you tilt the panel out too much, it won't go in right. So kind of just line it up here first, okay? Then you just lift it up and just drop it into place, okay? So there you go. Again, if you lift this up, if you try and put it in with like a bigger gap like this, it's not going to work. You have to hold it straight up like this. And then you kind of just drop it in and there you go. It should be really easy to click this back in. You can see how easy it is for me to click that in. And then you can see there's not much gap. The gaps will match. Um, but that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped you guys. Um, when they put the wrong RAM, it was blue screening, and it does take a lot longer. The screen would stay black for a lot longer. So if you're having similar symptoms, just be patient. Try putting back the old RAM. And yeah. Oh, one other thing. They do label which ram slot to put first so let me see if i can see it there okay so let me zoom in so it shows you the one to the right oh the <laughs> the glare sorry how do i get that glare off there you go so as you can see the slot to the right is number one and then the other one is number two why isn't it focusing come on they need a manual focus in this mode but anyways the first ram slot you want is closest to the motherboard or closest to the heat um the cooler sorry so to the right so this that one is number one and then this one is number two and then they label over here as well it's hard to see there you go and then same thing the center one the one closer to the center of the motherboard is three and then the one further over to the right is four. So you got number three here and then number four over there. Okay, and that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and put this panel back on. Hopefully this video helped you guys at least see what's inside the computer and see how you can upgrade it. Um, I didn't really go over what all the PCIe slots and whatever, um, but here you can see there's several slots for video cards. So there's three more right below this video card and then one more at the very bottom. 
Um, but yeah, that's all there is. Thanks for watching. If it helped you, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. If it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. But that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Let's power this thing up now. And you can see the light comes on. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's actually, I'll show you that the screen's coming on too. Hold, hold on, let me get up. Oh. <laughs> Took a while, but there you go. It's on and it's loading. All right, thanks for watching. See ya. Bye.